What with SUVs and MPVs and MAVs? It's easy to forget about the humble estate, but Kia hasn't. And this is the all new Seed Estate. Oh no, sorry, nearly called it Estate. It's actually a sport wagon. This is the Kia Seed Sport Wagon Estate, you and me. So uh, at the front, it's um, just like the Kia Seed hatchback, which we quite like. Looks really stylish. But around the back, it's not so stylish back here. Funky at the front, a bit clunky at the back, but never judge a book by its cover because as far as estates are concerned, it's what's in here that is just as important. The boot's not too bad. It's nice and flat, so there's no lip to get over and there are sort of hidden compartments for all sorts of things. Another secret compartment there, but it's not a secret now because I've shown it to you. And of course, the seats tumble. Let's have a look. Hmm, that's not quite flat. Let's go around the other side. To get this seat to go completely flat, you have to lift that up and push that down. And frankly, that's a bit old school. I reckon Kia are making some of the nicest designed interiors around. This cabin looks really quite smart. The dials are easy to read. There's a really good quality navigation system and all the controls fall nice and easily to hand. There are lots of buttons on the steering wheel, which is a little bit confusing and the quality is generally good. Nice squishy materials on the top. And if I can do the old uh, wedding ring test, I can so you can hear that's a nice dense plastic but just right beneath around the glove box it's a bit cheap I'd like to see a slightly better quality plastic around the glove box the bits that you touch are important Kia may call this the sport wagon but in reality it's anything but sporty this model's got a 1.6 litre diesel engine, which is uh, reasonably refined and smooth, but from a power point of view, well, it's hampered a little bit by the, the gearing. It's very long gearing, which helps economy, and the economy figures are really, really good. But there's just me and Pete in here at the moment. Say hello, Pete. Hello. And if you put the rest of the family on board, not that Pete and I have a family, but if you had three kids, a load of holiday luggage, or if you're a photocopier salesman with your latest wares in the back, I think you might get a little bit frustrated that there's not more power. If that is the case, probably steer clear of the 1.4. Now, there is a clever little button on the steering wheel that toggles through different modes in the steering. It's called flex steer, and I can choose sport, comfort, or normal steering mode. Frankly, I don't know why they bothered. I can't tell the difference. The ride errs on the side of comfort rather than sportiness too, which isn't a bad thing. This car we're in today is riding on continental tyres, but in my experience of Kia Seeds, the ride can vary depending on the rubber. If you're riding on some Korean rubber, for example, the ride might not be quite as good as it is on the Contis, so always check or ask the question before you buy. At least Kia have made it nice and easy when it comes to trim levels. Uh, one, two, three, and four. On oh, this four tech as well, but that tops out at close to twenty-five thousand pounds, which is a lot of money for a car like this. This is the three one-point-six diesel for twenty-one thousand pounds. Still quite a bit of cash, but of course there's still the seven-year warranty. Would I buy one of these? Well, I think there are better estate cars out there. A bit disappointed with the rear seats in particular and the old-school tumble and fold. Biggest problem though is. I really like the Kia Seed hatch and I think I'll probably make do with one of those.